how to survive the first 24 hours of WW3 when the sirens scream, the sky glows, and you're standing in your underwear wondering if this is real or just another Tuesday. Your phone buzzes, then it screams. Every screen in your house freezes on the same message. Ballistic missile threat inbound. Seek immediate shelter. This is not a drill. Outside, car alarms wail. Someone's crying. Someone's laughing. You're just standing there like an idiot, holding a coffee mug, wondering if you left the stove on. Spoiler, it doesn't matter. The world just hit the reset button and you've got about 15 minutes before the air turns spicy. No worries, we're surviving this. Let's go. Step one, don't freeze like a deer in nuclear headlights. Your brain wants to shut down. It's screaming glitch, prank, bad dream. Ignore it. That's your lizard brain trying to protect you from reality by pretending it isn't happening. Cute, but useless. You need to override the panic spiral right now. Say it out loud. Alert received. Details unknown. I need shelter. Sounds dumb? Good. It works. Verbalizing facts short circuits the emotional meltdown. You're not thinking anymore. You're acting. And action is the only currency that matters when the clock's ticking. If you're indoors, get to the center of the building. Away from windows, away from walls facing the blast. Bathrooms, closets, basements, anywhere with layers between you and the outside. If you're outside, run. Not toward your car, not toward the pretty park. Toward the ugliest, thickest concrete building you can find. Brick, stone, bunker chic architecture. Glass storefronts, death traps. Stay low, move fast. Distance and shielding are your only friends now. The science, nuclear blasts release thermal radiation, shock waves, and ionizing radiation. Thermal radiation travels at light speed and will cook you through a window. The shock wave follows seconds later and turns glass into shrapnel confetti. Ionizing radiation? That's the slow killer. It doesn't care about your feelings. It cares about your DNA, and it's coming to rewrite it. Walls, dirt, concrete, they absorb radiation. Your skin? Not so much. Get behind something dense. Now. Step two, turn your closet into a bunker, sort of. You made it inside. Congrats, you're not vapor, yet. Now turn this room into a survivable space. No windows, perfect. Windows, cover them. Mattress, couch cushions, bookshelves, that ugly painting, pile it against the glass. You're building a barrier between you and a radioactive hellscape. Grab supplies fast, water bottles, canned food, anything sealed, flashlights, batteries, radio, medications, Fill every container with water, sinks, tubs, pots. The grid's going down. When it does, your faucet becomes a museum piece. The science? Radiation intensity drops with distance and shielding. Every inch of material reduces exposure. It's the inverse square law. Double the distance, quarter the dose. Stack furniture, books, clothes. Density matters. Blinkets won't stop gamma rays, but they'll slow beta particles and block alpha. You're not building a fortress, you're buying time, and time is all you've got. Step three, seal the room, but don't suffocate yourself, genius. Close the windows, lock them. Stuff towels, shirts, socks into the cracks. You're keeping fallout particles out. Fallout is radioactive dust. It drifts on wind, settles on surfaces, and if you breathe it in, it sets up shop in your lungs and starts a slow motion cellular meltdown. But don't seal the room like a tomb. You need oxygen. Leave a small gap high up, a vent, a crock under the door. You're filtering particles, not air molecules. Seal it completely and you'll pass out from CO2 buildup before radiation gets you. Irony's a bitch. The science? Fallout particles are heavy. They settle. Most danger is in the first 48 hours. After that, radioactive decay reduces the threat. Iodine-131 has an eight-day half-life. Cesium-137, 30 years. You're playing a waiting game. The longer you stay inside, the safer outside becomes. But you need to breathe while you wait. So seal smart, not stupid. Let's continue with step four. Ration like your life depends on it. Because it does. You've got water, you've got food, you've also got a false sense of security. Don't blow it. Ration, immediately. Two liters of water per person per day. Sounds like a lot? It's not. You will want to chug it. Don't. You sip. You spread it out. Your body can survive on less if you're not moving much. And guess what? You're not moving. 
You are sitting in a closet, breathing recycled air, wondering if your ex is okay. They're probably fine. They always are. Now for food. Canned goods, protein bars, anything calorie dense. Do not cook. Do not open windows to vent smoke. You eat cold. You eat boring. You eat to survive, not to enjoy. This is not a picnic. This is a siege. Here's the science behind it. The human body can survive about three days without water and three weeks without food. But dehydration? Dehydration hits fast. Your brain needs water to function. Your kidneys need it to filter waste. Without it, you get confused, then weak, then dead. Food is secondary. Calories will keep you warm and alert, but water keeps you alive. Prioritize accordingly. Step five, ignore the internet. Yes, really. Your phone is buzzing. Notifications are everywhere. Breaking, City X destroyed. Unconfirmed, radiation cloud heading south. Watch, horrifying footage of the blast. Don't, just don't. Social media during a crisis is a dumpster fire of misinformation, panic porn, and people filming their own demise for likes. You do not need that energy. Find a battery-powered radio, tune it to the emergency frequencies, listen for official updates. FEMA, local authorities, anyone with an actual plan. Write it down, the time, the location, the instructions. Then turn the radio off. Save the battery. You are not doom scrolling. You are surviving. The science on this is simple. Information overload triggers cortisol spikes. Cortisol clouds your judgment. You make bad decisions. You panic. You waste precious energy. Your brain is a survival machine, but it is also a drama queen. Feed it facts, not fear clean sources only. Everything else is just noise. Step six, stay put, even when it feels wrong. Hours pass. You hear footsteps outside, voices, then a knock. Someone says, we're heading to the hills, come with us. Don't. The roads are absolute chaos. Jammed cars, panicked drivers, no fuel and no plan. You are safer in your sealed room than on a highway to nowhere. Now, if authorities issue an official evacuation order, that's different. You pack light, ID, cash, water, snacks, meds, a flashlight, the radio, and you move fast. But until then, stay put. The instinct to run is strong. You have to ignore it. You're not a deer. You're a human with a brain. Use it. Here's why. Fallout is most dangerous in the first 24 to 48 hours. After that, radioactive decay drastically reduces the threat. If you shelter in place, you avoid exposure during peak danger. If you run, you're just walking through a radioactive cloud with no protection. The math is simple. Stay inside, stay alive. So, the payoff. The first 24 hours of World War III aren't about heroics. They're about discipline. You controlled your panic, you found shelter, you sealed the room, you rationed your water, you ignored the noise, you stayed put. You didn't freeze, you didn't run, you didn't die. The world outside is burning, the grid is down, the sky is the wrong color but you're still breathing, you're still thinking, you're still here. And that is the only victory that matters. No bottled water, no problem. Just science, scraps, and survival. If you made it this far, congratulations, you survived. Or at least, you're still trying. And in the wasteland, that is all anyone can ask. Welcome to day two.